Hello, welcome. Happy Friday. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gomansing. Topping our newscast, recently we've had reports of some private videos and images, one notably involving Congresswoman Stacey Plaskett, that have been illegally obtained and proliferated on the Internet. One lawmaker with extensive policing background encourages residents to report them to law enforcement and sounds off on why these actions are a threat to public safety. News 2's April Knight has more. In the wake of the recent leaks of private videos, one involving Delegate to Congress Stacey Plaskett and another involving a female police officer, Senator Novell Francis, a former police commissioner, weighs in. Mm -hmm. By other means, but for some reason there seems to be a proliferation of, of the type of videos most recently. Francis is the current chairman of the Senate Committee on Homeland Security, Public Safety and Justice. He says the combination of invasion of privacy and using technology technology and social networks to proliferate sensitive material are criminal and a danger to public safety. You know, cyberbullying and, and invasion of our privacy certainly um, becomes a, a, a crime and that's not a good thing. I, I believe that in fact there is some harassment there mm. and there's some slander and libel that, that you could actually be charged with. You know, these matters need to be investigated and um, you know, justice needs to be served. That's why earlier in the year, he said, the Virgin Islands Senate passed what is now Act 7799, which addresses cyberbullying. Uh, Act 7799, which allow individuals to actually file reports of harassment and sparking uh, as a result of these type of, of situations. According to Francis, in cases where invasion of privacy and cyberbullying come into play, investigations normally take time, especially when the complainants are reluctant to cooperate. While they want these matters to, to be investigated, they're still a little bit apprehensive about you know, giving you the true and detailed information regarding um, what uh, may be involved in this type of situation. He still encourages people to report such crimes to local law enforcement, which he says is fully capable of investigating these crimes. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. Lieutenant Governor Osbert Potter, who serves as chairman of the Virgin Islands Banking Board, cautions all consumers that scammers are targeting Virgin Islands job seekers and offering opportunities for employment in exchange for payment before obtaining the job. In most instances, the scammers, he say, will send the job seeker money or valuables or they ask to use the job seeker's personal bank account to transfer funds. Some scammers will even send the job seeker what seems to be an authentic cashier's check or a check written on a known bank or credit union. The job seeker is instructed to deposit or cash that check keep some of the money for themselves and send the rest of the money to the scammer via Western Union or MoneyGram. Then in a few days or weeks later, the bank notifies the job seeker that the check is fraudulent. Call VIPD or any other law enforcement if you have any questions or have been targeted. Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands business owners are encouraged to join Agility Recovery and the U.S. Small Business Administration on Wednesday, August 10th, mark it on the calendar, for a live online discussion on how to develop both shelter in place and evacuation plans. Tips will also be shared on how to conduct drills that will protect the safety of staff, clients, and the community where you do business. The SBA has partnered with Agility Recovery to offer business continuity strategies at its Prepare My Business website. You can visit www.preparemybusiness.org to access past webinars and to download disaster preparedness checklists. The SBA provides disaster recovery assistance in the form of low interest loans to homeowners, renters, private nonprofits, and businesses of all sizes. On Thursday, a few government agencies came before the Senate Finance Committee. Among them was the Virgin Islands Taxicab Commission. Levron Saru, executive director of the commission, said they will be receiving a total of $856,000. Lawmakers questioned why, although there are about three times more taxi licenses on St. Thomas than on St. Croix. St. Croix accounts for 95 out of 97 superior court citations for taxi operators. Here's more. In St. Thomas, we have a very heavy tourism industry. And my, the officers concentrate 
at these areas where you have large activities such as West Indian Company, uh, Crown Bay, Megan's Bay, Cookie Point, and we are really focusing on the taxis. In St. Croix with less industries, the biggest part of our problem is that you have uh, private people continuously parking on the taxi stands. And that's why you have that large citation for the Superior Court. On July 27th at approximately 6 p.m., officers from the Anselmo Marshall Command Zone in Christian said St. Croix were dispatched to a discharging of shots fired in the John F. Kennedy housing community. Here's more from VIPD. Upon arrival at the scene, officers observed a large crowd surrounding an unknown black male individual who had sustained multiple gunshot wounds to his arms, legs, midsection, and back area of the body. The officers, the Forensic Unit, and the Criminal Investigations Bureau secured the scene and canvassed the area for information. The victim was transported to the Wang Lui Hospital for treatment, where he remains in critical but stable condition. Police are urging anyone with information to call the Chief's Office at 778-2211, the Criminal Investigations Bureau at 712-6092, 911 or the anonymous tip line, Crime Stoppers VI at 1-800-222-TIP. On July 28th at approximately 8.14 p.m., officers were dispatched by 911 emergency call centers to a shooting in Estate Glen in the vicinity of the cockpit. Upon arrival, the officers observe a male individual sitting in the driver's seat in his pickup truck who had sustained multiple gunshot wounds to his upper body. The officers discovered several shell casings adjacent to the victim's pickup truck. The victim was transported to the Juana Fluey Hospital by ambulance where 63-year-old Ralph Skerritt succumbed to his injuries. Forensic officers and members from the Criminal Investigations Unit were present, processed the scene, checked the area for suspects and witnesses with negative results. Again, call police if you can assist in their investigation. Turning to the states, the political conventions are over and the real work began today. Both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump hit the campaign trail and took their pitch to voters on the road. It was the first time Clinton greeted voters as a presidential nominee. Diane Gallagher is in Washington with the highlights from the last night of the DNC. I accept your nomination for president of the United States. During a star-studded event, Hillary Clinton reintroduced herself to the world. Through all these years of public service, the service part has always come easier to me than the public part. I get it that some people just don't know what to make of me. In an effort to unite her party, the candidate recognized her primary opponent. I want to thank Bernie Sanders. I want you to know, I've heard you. Your cause is our cause. And attacked her political rival, Donald Trump. He wants to make America great again. Well, he could start by actually making things in America again. So just ask yourself, do you really think Donald Trump has the temperament to be commander in chief? Donald Trump can't even handle the rough and tumble of a presidential campaign. A man you can bait with a tweet is not a man we can trust with nuclear weapons. The campaign now moves toward the general election as Clinton attempts to become the first woman president of the United States. When there are no ceilings, the sky's the limit. In Washington, I'm Diane Gallagher. Four Floridians in the Miami-Dade and Broward counties have been affected with Zika locally. According to health officials, these are the first known cases of the virus being transmitted by mosquitoes in the continental United States. Officials believe the local transmission is confined to a small area north of downtown Miami with a single zip code. Florida Governor Rick Scott addressed concerns at a news conference this morning. Florida currently has the capacity to test 6,609 people for active Zika virus and 2,059 people for Zika antibodies. In total, we have tested 2,329 people across the state. If we need more test kits, we will immediately request them from the CDC. 
keeping our eye on the economy, forget other social media outlets. Facebook's biggest threat right now may be Uncle Sam. Facebook disclosed on Thursday that it could owe billions due to an IRS investigation into the way it moved assets to an Irish subsidiary to avoid higher taxes. According to a Facebook filing with the Securities and Exchange Commission, the tax penalty could total up to $5 billion plus interest. The investigation dates back to 2010 when Facebook shifted the rights for its worldwide business, excluding the U.S. and Canada, to Facebook Ireland as part of a complex maneuver to reduce its tax payments. Facebook says it disagrees with the IRS position and will file a petition in the United States Tax Court challenging the notice. An investigator with the IRS says she issued six summonses last month for Facebook to produce records related to the asset transfer. Facebook failed to comply with those requests. And earlier this week, the IRS disclosed that Facebook ignored a seventh summons as well. Here's a look at the stock market watch at the New York Stock Exchange. As you can see, the Dow is down 24, NASDAQ, S&P 500 up. Coming up on News 2, the Virgin Islands Territorial Emergency Management Agency is hosting four hurricane awareness courses for anyone interested in learning about hazards associated with hurricanes and how to prepare. Welcome back. On Thursday, the director of the Virgin Islands Territorial Emergency Management Agency, Mona Barnes, gave us a glimpse into what the hurricane season looks like. She also shared that the agency is doing something new this year as they try to make sure the public has the information they need to be prepared. News 2 April Knight has details. With the hurricane peak season just around the corner, the Virgin Islands Territorial Emergency Management Agency is ramping up its outreach to Virgin Islands residents. Usually when we have these courses, they're more geared to uh, agency. Uh, unlike in the past, what we're offering now is to the general public. Next week, the agency is holding a series of classes for free, all focused on hurricane awareness. It just teaches um, hurricane science, uh, a little bit about forecasting, warnings, and basically how to prepare in the event that we do uh, have a hurricane. The four-hour classes will be offered twice a day, on St. Croix on Monday and Tuesday at the Curriculum Center, and on St. Thomas at the Human Services Building in Sugar Estate. Barnes said hurricane preparation needs to happen on a daily basis, starting off with an emergency family plan and stocking up on essentials. Preparing your family plan, ensuring uh, uh, the food Food, the water, uh, the, the canned goods, the whistle, uh, your all your important documentation. According to Barnes, residents should also pay attention to family members that need help, like children and the elderly. For those of you that have loved ones that are elderly and they live alone, check on them, uh, take care of them. Natural disasters can be unpredictable, and Barnes said we can never be too prepared. The, the way we build our homes and the shutters, a lot of the homes now have shutters and so we just need to be mindful that we just have to continue to prepare. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. We also mentioned the upcoming live testing of iPods by Tima's new mass alert system in the event of an emergency. That test will occur on August 18th. Well, here's a quick update. A blown fuse of WAPA's generating Unit 23 was the cause of Wednesday evening's series of power outages late Wednesday evening. Full power was restored to St. Thomas St. John District at 10.45 p.m. Wednesday. Unit 23 is WAPA's biggest unit. That tripped offline around 9.28 p.m., resulting in a large number of feeders across St. Thomas and St. John falling offline. And turning back to Vitima, the Virgin Islands Territorial Emergency Management Agency, they're keeping a watchful eye on two tropical waves off the coast of Africa. According to the U.S. National Weather Service in San Juan, it's still too early to forecast these systems, but 
at least one may impact the USVI as a tropical depression on Sunday. Environmental conditions are expected to be somewhat conducive for development this weekend when the disturbance could be near the northern Lesser Antilles in Puerto Rico. A second tropical wave accompanied by a low pressure system is producing an area of showers and thunderstorms about 350 miles south southeast of the Cabo Verde. The Federal Highway Administration working on behalf of the park will begin construction on the North Shore Road beginning in late August and that's the VI National Park. There are two short sections of the road that will be repaired under this contract. One of the sections is at each end of the half bridge structure with stone guard wall overlooking Oppenheimer and Gibney Beach and Hawks Nest. Flaggers and traffic control will be in place for the project at, as it is expected that the road will often have only one lane open along these sections for the period of performance and that time is it's 65 calendar days from August 22nd to October 16th. 41 teams participating and celebrity judges and more succeeded in raising $58,783. The check presentation ceremony for the 7th annual King of the Wing contest was held today at the Charles Turnbull Regional Library in St. Thomas. White Bay Group, Alpine Security USVI, they were organizers of the competition. It reveals that donation amount from this year's event, which was held on June 4th, 2016. Teams consisting of top local restaurants, businesses, organizations, and chicken wing connoisseurs compete. This year's beneficiary was the Junior Achievement of the Virgin Islands. It's an organization dedicated to helping prepare young people in the VI gain real-world financial skills needed to flourish in today's global economy. What a great donation. More food, more fundraising. Come out to Abbey Beach Bar on Saturday for the lasagna extravaganza, and that's to benefit the Family Resource Center. There will be live music, cornhole, and lots of lasagna. You can expect prizes for the best meat category, best veggie, and best seafood. Entries should be in by 11.30 a.m. Judging begins at 12. Tickets will be sold for a dollar each after the judging. All proceeds from the ticket sales, entry fees, as well as a donation by Abbey Beach will go to the Family Resource Center. Diageo USVI, in partnership with Balter St. Croix and the UVI Cell Center, they're pleased to announce that registration is currently ongoing for Learning for Life program on the island of St. Croix. That program offers individuals ages 18 to 24 an opportunity to gain professional training in the hospitality service industry. Participants in the program will select one of two tracks, culinary arts or bartending. Applications are due by August 12, 2016. Individuals interested in participating in the program will be required to attend a mandatory information session on Friday, August 12, at the UVI Cell Center in Frederickstead, St. Croix, and it will begin promptly at 10 a.m. Well, celebrations were held in Peru and amongst the small Peru, Peru community in St. Thomas. Many got together on the East End right there at Senior Frogs on Thursday night, displaying the flag in many different ways, the flag itself in pins. The U.S. State Department issued congratulations Thursday to Peru, which celebrated the 195th anniversary of its independence from the Spanish Empire on July 28, 1821. In a statement, Secretary of State John Kerry noted that Peru and the United States have enjoyed a long friendship rooted in our mutual respect for freedom, good governance, and the rule of law. Kerry also referred to the 2016 presidential election of Pedro Pablo Kuczynski, a former Peruvian economist and public administrator. More celebrations. The biggest cultural fete in the BVI is in Tortola in August. The event is known as the Emancipation Festival and also as August's Festival. It's a celebration of emancipation. Activities include pageants, food fair, musical show, horse races, and parade. Some events have already kicked off, such as a Calypso show. The village opened on July 26. Coming up, it's the Emancipation March. Emancipation Service, Miss BVI, all on July 31st. Stick around. You're news to AccuWeather Forecast. It's coming up next.
Happy Friday and thanks so much for joining me tonight. I am AccuWeather's Larissa Abreu with a look at your Virgin Island forecast. Here's a look at current satellite across the Virgin Islands. Conditions are very nice and tranquil, but we do have some change coming up as we head towards the weekend. If you take a look here at the far, far corner, we're dealing with a tropical wave that's getting closer and closer. And as it does, we'll notice scattered shower activity increasing over the next few days, and some of which we'll see heavy rain and possible low Local, locally heavy thunderstorms as well. For tonight, however, conditions will remain nice and tranquil. Lots of dry air in place, but a lot of that drier air will be replaced with moisture as we head towards tomorrow. It'll be clear and nice with a low of 82 degrees, so make the, those outdoor plans because as we head towards tomorrow, we do have a better chance of an afternoon storm. As we head towards the day, however, it'll turn out partly sunny. The best chance to see the showers or the rumbles of thunder will be during the afternoon and into the evening evening hours. Temperature of 91 expected in St. John's. We're at 91 degrees out in St. Thomas and they too will see the chance for an afternoon shower or storm as we kick off the weekend. 90 your daytime high St. Croix with partial sunshine and a threat for a passing shower. As we take a look at boating conditions in the Atlantic, waves are between 2 and 4 feet, with winds out of the east between 10 and 15 knots. Quite similar across the Caribbean. We're looking at waves between 2 and 4 feet, with winds out of the east between 10 and 15 knots. Now taking a look at the next five days over the island, once again we are going to see the return of spotty afternoon thunderstorms as we head towards Saturday. Because that tropical wave will be having, a, it is going to have lots of moisture associated with it, we do have the possibility of a few scattered showers and thunderstorms, some of which can be locally heavy at times. The threat for rain will continue into the day on Sunday, although those showers will become a little bit more spottier in nature. As we head towards Monday, a day full of sunshine and more humidity. Notice we are looking at higher dew points as we kick off the new work week. Conditions remaining nice and tranquil into the day on Tuesday. And then by Wednesday of next week, we'll have the chance for spotty showers as those trade winds continue to kick off. I, I hope everyone has an, a beautiful weekend and take it right back, Sandy. Thanks for that. It is time for our news to weather picture there by Donnelly Isaac, nine year old representing E. Benjamin Oliver Elementary School. Some cool, calm conditions there, blue skies, white, white puffy clouds and some outdoor fun. It looks like Donnelly may be a good weekend for that, but keep the umbrella handy because we may have some disturbances in the weather there. Thank you for that. Send us your news to weather picture 2, news 2.